Emerson is with us in Pennsylvania. Hi, Emerson. How are you? Hi, Dave. I am so much better than I deserve. Thank you. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Um, I am a 26-year-old single mother um, with a 3-year-old. Um, I work full-time, and I am going to school part-time. I make less than $30,000 $30, a year, and I have been stuck in baby step three for about two years just because I keep using what's, what's left of even just my number one emergency, like my, my baby emergency fund, just to get through the year. I end up using my, my tax return or what little I get of my tax return to, to supplement my baby, put my, um, my emergency fund, and then that ends up getting used up throughout the year because I can't make it, I can't even pay for a whole lot of food with just my monthly income. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm, I've, I'm feeling stuck and um, I, I do, I know that my, my problem is my income. Mm-hmm. I would really, I am in school to try to get a degree. I don't have a degree, but I'm trying to get one in order to um, be able to be marketable and try to get a better job mm-hmm. in order to, you know, in order to bring my income up. Gotcha. Um, you're you're, so, you're uh, scratching and clawing, kiddo. Good job. Yeah, thank um, you. So uh, uh, what are you studying? Um, I'm studying to be a, par- be a paralegal, but I have a... Um, a 10-year plan to get my law degree. Mm-hmm. And when will you finish the paralegal uh, designation? Uh, paralegal, I will graduate from my, from my associates in the spring of 2017. And right now I'm paying for it with grants. Okay. All right. And so basically we're saying um, a year and a half. Right. Another year. Yeah. And then, and then things are going to change because paralegals make more than 30 grand. Right. And so that's going to be very helpful. Right. So, um, and, and where do you think the leak is in your budget? What's the biggest thing that you think's taking your budget down? Um, probably gas money. I have to drive, um, about, uh, half an hour to drop my daughter off at daycare because my, my work shift, which is the only shift that I'm able to get right now is second shift. And in order to find a daycare that is open that late, I have to drive into the city. And then I also work in a different town out of the city that I have to drive to about 45 minutes from the city to get to work. And so I'm spending about $300 a month on gas, mm, okay. which is, um, you know, it's eating up what, what I could have spent on food. And so I think last month for September, I do use the every dollar budget uh, tool. And mm-hmm. for last month at September, I could only worm out $85 for food. Okay. Well, let's stop that idea. Here's the thing. Food is first. Right. It's not last. It's not wormed out. You start right. with food because you have to eat before you can do anything. Right. And so, I struggle with that. I've struggled with that my entire life. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not an anorexic, but I'm, I'm very close to it. I don't really eat a whole lot. Yeah. But you have a baby to raise. Oh. And, right. and here's, what's ha- here's what this says, okay? The mm-hmm. biggest tool that you have to clean this mess up is mm-hmm. you. Right. And you have to eat. Right. So, in other words, to feed the program, we have to feed you. Right. So you need to look at it that way, that this is a proper value system. Food is first. Lights and water is second. How much is your rent? Uh, so, oh, that's another thing. It's six ninety five out of my 1650 that I have for every month. Yeah. yeah. And so your, your rent's killing you. Mm-hmm. It's not your food and it's not your gas. Okay. Your, your rent's killing you. Okay. Um, I know that's still a cheap rent. It's not a, it's not like you're right. spending a lot of money, but as a percentage of your income, um, right. that that's, what's there. Uh, do you have any family in the area? Um, I do, but not that I'm able to ask a whole lot of help from, um, mm-hmm. my mother lives about an hour away and mm-hmm. she's, um, as much as she wants to help and she tries to help, mm-hmm. it's not um, it's not fiscally responsible for me to ask her for help because she's not in they're not in the greatest financial gotcha. situation either. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. But, yeah. um, and um, so. and what are you doing? What's the job you're doing? I, um, I'm right now. I work for um, hospital registration. I actually work for like a, a clinic. I do uh, basically that when you go into a clinic, if you know you hand your photo ID and your insurance card to a person, mm-hmm. that's me. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah. And you're making 30000 Just under, actually, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, not- let's do this. I, I, uh, if you can adjust your rent, that's fine. It would be very helpful because I think that's what's knocking your knees out from under you. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's kicking your feet out. So, right. uh, But if you can't, then let's pretend this happens. 
Let's okay. pretend that you just keep putting the emergency fund in place, but then something breaks or something, and it, and it keeps coming back down. And between right. now and the time you graduate, you don't make any progress, but you stay, but you also don't go into debt. Right. You just kind of you just kind of hang on by your fingernails, right? Right. Mm-hmm. If you can hang on to eighteen months, then that's right. where your light at the end of the tunnel is, is because your income is going to change dramatically, and for that matter, your life's going to change dramatically. I the, sure hope the, so. <laughs> the three hundred dollar gas bill is going to go down because you're going to move mm-hmm. to an area that's very close to your job, and right. the daycare is going to be near your job, and that's going to just you know the time you have is going to come back much less your money. Right. And so. Okay. So. Yeah, so would it be worth it for me to move closer, either closer to my daughter's daycare or, um, I mean, to try and to try and do that? I mean, because I might be able to get a cheaper rent in the city, but the environment's not that great. There's yeah. shootings probably every week. Yeah, well, we don't want to get you in a place yeah. that's unsafe. We right. don't, certainly don't put your baby in a place that's unsafe. But mm-hmm. I probably would shop. And just, okay. you know, try to take a little bit of time and start looking. You might stumble into what I always like to look for is that thing that nobody knows about that you find out maybe through your church or something. Right. And it's the mm-hmm. uh, garage apartment out back of some rich old lady's house. And okay. she just kind of takes you in and, you know, lets you, you know, rent that garage apartment real cheap. Uh, right. that, that kind of a thing. That's the type of weird, you know, you're not looking for a straight up apartment from a straight up right. landlord. I, mm-hmm. I just, I'd like to find some kind of an unusual thing that would, cut your rent down while you finish this degree okay because if you could cut it down just a little bit it would change everything Mm -hmm. but listen emerson you put Mm -hmm. you put food at the top of your list it's your number one priority you don't do anything until you buy food for yourself and that baby do you hear me yes sir okay i don't want to hear from you otherwise on anything else i'll help you with anything i can anything i can you call me back if you're scared or you're struggling but you make sure you're eating okay Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. You call in again.